Have you ever wanted to ask a homeschooler um, a question? Well, you're going to get that opportunity today because I have um, a conservative homeschooler and she is going to tell all about her adventures as a conservative conservative commentator and a leader on Instagram. Um, can you just give us a little introduction and tell us um, one thing about your homeschool journey that you absolutely love? So just um, introduce yourself and then kind of go into your homeschool journey. Okay, so my name is Elisa Steele. I am conservative babes on Instagram primarily. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and all that cool stuff. But Instagram is where my homies hang out. Also on iTunes and everywhere you listen to podcasts. That's also where you'll find me. But my favorite thing, favorite memory, favorite thing about homeschooling is actually that's how I got my start in politics. And I literally would not be where I am today without homeschooling. Now, go back to where this began is my mom was a citizen lobbyist on Capitol Hill in my home state of Utah. And she'd take me up as like a six-year-old little girl and I was bored as all get out. Of course, homeschoolers, they're not allowed to use that word. That's a bad word. But <laughs> I was disinterested in what was going on around me as a five and six-year-old. But as I got older, when I was 14, and this is, you know, high school age, where technically I should have been tied down to a really tight schedule. I should have been, you know, taking this class, this class going for long extended hours into school. But because I was a homeschooler, it gave me opportunities my peers did not have. It gave me steps into worlds, into the adult world, into hands-on knowledge, into hands-on learning. My peers did not have, except my homeschool peers, of course. And so because of that, I became a full-time a full-time intern at the Utah State Capitol with Utah Eagle Form. Shout out to Utah Eagle Form for being awesome. And I was taken under some very prominent conservative women's wings at that time and was trained up in the ways of how to be a active, concerned, and informed citizen of the United States and of the state of Utah. And it was, I was spending, you know, 60, 70 hour weeks at the Capitol and I thrived on it. And the truth is wow. some people will be like, well, how did that work? Obviously it was for a season. It's for an internship. So it was about seven weeks at a time every year. And, but the thing is that some people would be like, oh, well, how'd you get your other studies done? How'd you, do? you don't understand. You learn everything. If you're invested enough deeply into one topic, you're learning everything. You're going over math. You're correcting your spellings and all your note takings and, and committee meetings. You are working on your penmanship. You're working definitely on your reading. Like there's your communication so skills. <laughs> exactly. Your communication. I was talking to senators and representatives about bills I was concerned about that would be affecting homeschoolers, that would be affecting, um, I, was, I am and, and have been very, very pro-life, that were affecting the unborn. So literally as a homeschooler, I got opportunities that my peers never would have gotten unless they were homeschooled like I was. And so that's my favorite thing about homeschooling. And that is wow, mainly yeah. a huge reason why I'm here today. That is so exciting. So you are the face behind Conservative Babes on Instagram. And please give us a little bit about your podcast. You have a podcast that you started. Um, let us know when that started and what um, is the whole theme and topic around that podcast. Absolutely. So the name of the podcast is Deconstructing the Culture with Elisa Steele. I am Elisa Steele. So you get to hang out with me once a week on the podcast and go over culture because the truth is I don't believe that politics is a top-down politics happen and then it changes the culture. No, what we're struggling through in politics today is very much indicative of what's going on in the culture. I take gay marriage, for instance. Gay marriage wasn't just legalized in the Supreme Court. It happened on a cultural level before it ever went to the Supreme Court. It was lost on a culture cultural level and, and they gained count the leftism in our country gained ground there before it ever went to Supreme Court. So I believe that the core of changing America or making America better or just healing families is all going to be on a cultural core level and individual level. So every day, or excuse me, every week, actually every day on Instagram, if you're on Instagram is every day, but once a week <laughs> in the podcast, we deconstruct the culture. We take what is um, most popular in movies, in um, songs, in the news, and we deconstruct. What does that mean? What is that? Ch how is that changing? How is that shaping our culture? How can we identify these, these indicative 
pieces that are culturally moving around and see where this is going and also how can we combat that and then every every week at the end of the podcast we end it on a high note because a high note because I never want people to forget we live in the most blessed time in the most blessed country and we serve the greatest God and I never want us to forget that I don't want us to get stuck in this doom and gloom so it's very high it's very right. upbeat while also being very informative that is so exciting because um, I think it's so needed today. I, I think, I feel like young people are totally lost sometimes and it's great to have um, a reliable source to go to. So um, let's rewind and go back to the very beginning. So in your homeschool journey, were you um, always homeschooled or how did that play out in your life? So I tell people I was a little bit of everything except public school. <laughs> we call it homeschool. Yeah. We call it homeschool in my family, but really what homeschool to us means, means a little bit of everything. So, um, you know, for one semester, I'd go to a private school where I wanted to do like mock trial or I wanted to do some kind of debate, like organized function or, and then another semester I'd have a tutor who'd go over different core subjects with me, um, that I wanted to focus on. And then another season I would just do independent studies and my mom would guide that. And I would do intense independent studies. Another, you know, semester or two, I would do um, online school. So as a ch young child, it was all very much homeschool for like homeschool in the traditional sense. And then as I got older and more into high school age, as, as we would call it today, I, it, it varied and it got a little diversified. But at the end of the day, it was all very, very carefully guided by my mom. And so she calls it all homeschool. She's like, I might as well have taught you. I did so much research to make sure you were in the right program at the right time. So right, right, exactly. Um, I love that because I feel like a lot of homeschoolers they like to put them like to make the boxes i don't know why we always fall it seems like we follow the schools and always put people in these boxes and um even if you are you know doing online homeschool you know online school that's homeschool your it parents is. are guiding that so um even if you need like some extra curricular or extra help outside of school i i believe that that you're in part homeschooling so um okay. i definitely love that you touched on that um can you tell us because i feel like a lot of um homeschoolers are very weary of kind of the digital age and kind of the letting allowing their children to um, pursue those kinds of things can you kind of give us some insight about when your um, parents allowed you on social media or allowed you um, to take advantage of some of the digital resources out there yes so that was very carefully guided. Um, part of it is the fact that my dad is a software engineer, so he had all this knowledge. This is before we had all our mainstream, like you can monitor everything on your kid's computer. That was my dad setting that stuff up on the back end. <laughs> so um, nowadays you, it's easy for homeschool parents um, to keep an eye on what their kids are doing because we have so many phenomenal programs and softwares. But I remember it was probably around the age of like, 15, 16, you know, we had a computer, we, we each had a computer that was strictly for school. We were allowed to use our computers when we were around a parent. So my, my dad, at fourth, I was very blessed for many years of my life. My dad worked from home as a software engineer. So we could either hang out wherever mom was sporadically or else we could sit, you know, in my dad's office and do school at a desk in, in his his office, um, but it was around 15, 16. It comes with some risks, and this is something I tell parents very frequently. I give them unsolicited advice on homeschooling. Just kidding, but no, it, <laughs> it is a huge risk. And, and I don't, I don't know if your if your audience is mature or not, but I will say there are some substantial temptations and risks, especially for young boys that I would be very, very wary of. So there, there are some pros and cons with online, but there's a lot of good there. You just have to shape it and you have to guide it and you have to be very wary and, and also just in tune with the spirit, you know, be praying. Is this the right, is right kid, right temperament, right program? You know, there's a lot of things that go on with that. As far as social media goes, you asked about that. I really wanted to because it was right around like I think MySpace was a big deal at the time. Right? Oh, <laughs> MySpace no. was a big deal. Um, I got a Facebook when I was probably like 16. My parents were not really a huge fan of it. I, I got their permission, but um, they were not a huge, huge fan of it. I ended up doing it. Um, as I got older, I realized that was dumb because 16-year-olds are really dumb, just being honest. 17-year-olds <laughs> are dumb, too. 
I'm going to look back in my 40s and I'm going to say, you know what, 20, 20 odd, you know, all your 20s, you're probably dumb too. So <laughs> I'm just saying I post, I, I post as, as little on social media about my personal life as I can. I do not ever post pictures of my younger siblings or usually minors if I can help it, um, unless I get their parents, you know, very specific permission. So I'm careful with social media and, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my kids specifically, you know, I, the world's going to look different when my kids are old enough to be using social media. But my, my guess is I'll probably tend to stay away from it as well, simply because there's, yes, there's, you know, a lot of good to it, but there's a lot to be abused about it. And so I don't know, I would probably steer, steer away from that, but you know, there's a lot of good. So I would also, you know, encourage it to some extent for different learning programs. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's definitely um, a good thing to balance, you know, take advantage of some of the, of the things and then also to restrict. So definitely a balance there. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about why you wanted to start conservative babes on Instagram and what was the motivation behind that? Yeah. You know what? That's a crazy question. I <laughs> feel like it's been a wild ride. I did not expect it to be where it is today. I just, I started it kind of on a whim. I think I was living in Idaho at the time and I was just chatting with my mom and I was just like, I'm just, I'm so frustrated about what's going on. And I <laughs> and feel like all the negatives about yeah, there were so many. Yeah, so so many negatives, and I just felt like, you know what, but I know having been in the political world and having started in the political world at a very young age, at 14, I knew that there was a core group of America that's not as vocal, but they believed the same way that I believed, and I wanted to grow that, I wanted to nurture that, I wanted to create a tribe and community that we could come together and have these discussions, and it's not just conservatives who are on my page. It's a lot of, we've got some, you know, very flaming, flamboyant homosexuals and some people who very much disagree with me, but we keep it civil. We keep it um, concentrated on ideas rather than, you know, slandering each other. And so, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I started it, honestly, I think maybe it's a little out of frustration. And from there, it grew into something beautiful and, and def very, very different than how I initially um, ever thought it would go to, but it's been a beautiful ride. It's been amazing. We've had some incredible guests and some exciting people are coming on soon. We, I just interviewed Ali Stuckey from oh, The yeah. Blaze and Alicia Krause from The Daily Wire. We've got some amazing people coming on and, and in the near future on the podcast. So I'm excited. That is so exciting. I really like Ali. So <laughs> I'm excited for that one. Um, so back to the homeschooling, um, part. We had a question from the audience um, and they were wondering about older um, resources for older kids and they were wondering about um, places to go to look for reading material and and mainly appropriate reading material. So um, maybe you could give them a resource or a, a series or an author that you really like and really appreciate. Yeah, so I'm a big classics girl. I'm I'm all the way back in the classics, and I know that's not super popular with the young people, but I believe if we can help kind of encourage and develop that, then eventually that will be something that they crave as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reading list that for young people, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Thomas Jefferson Education or the yes. TGA Ed Method. Yes, so they came out with a book, a little book like this big, called um, Thomas Jefferson Education for Teens, and in it is a reading list at the back of the book. I would highly recommend and um, maybe I can look that up and send you a link or something, but that right. has a phenomenal reading list for young people, especially one that will kind of light their fire and inspire them. I would definitely recommend that. I love it. Yes, we highly recommend the classics, and I love listening to them on audio as well because it just really helps if you don't have a lot of time. Um, okay, so um, for some of our listeners – they might just be interested in homeschooling or just curious um what's one thing that you would say to them um on their decision to homeschool or not so why would how would you encourage someone to homeschool why would they want to homeschool well um your children will thank you someday i'm not <laughs> even kidding I think probably around the age of 19 or 20. So it was quite a, a few years ago now. Hang on. I'm, I'm still a baby. I'm still a baby. Okay. I'm not even going to lie about that. But a few years ago when I was quite a bit younger and I was living in DC at the time, I called my mom one day 
and I was really experiencing the world all by myself. Like get, living in the big city, DC doesn't get much bigger than that. I was living by myself thousands of, of miles away from my mom and dad. And I was experiencing life in a whole nother aspect of peers who were interested in the same field as well. And I called my mom and I just, just remember, I don't remember the whole conversation, but I remember this part. And I said, mom, thank you. You sacrificed so much. You sacrificed maybe a career and dreams of yours. You sacrificed so much, but I literally am so incredibly different than my peers. I think on a fundamental level, I think differently. My brain works differently. I look at the world differently. I look at struggles and obstacles differently. I don't, it's not even the whole concept of homeschooling to me, if you could boil it down to one thing is teaching your child, your children how to think rather than what to think. And it is so powerful what comes away. You know, I have a younger brother who's just younger than me and he just got married and he's living the life and whatever. And we're polar opposites, raised the oh, same way, really? polar opposites, polar opposites. Wow. But he, he has the same experience, even though we're polar opposites, we study different things in, in homeschooling and everything. He'll thank my mom for the same things. Mom, I am different. I, I view the world differently. I am it, it, on a fundamental level. I view the world and I think differently because of the sacrifice that you put into my life in homeschooling me. So that's one. Your children will thank you. If, you, if you're wondering, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. It will feel yeah. like hell and it will feel like chaos sometimes. <laughs> I promise you, it is worth it. And and then one more thing too, and this is maybe too like, I don't know, maybe this is like super homeschooler and super <laughs> conservative of me. But honestly, I'm not a mom yet. But I do even wonder at this now, like, who do you want raising your kids? And it's not even like anything against public school, even if it's phenomenal, even if it's in a really amazing private school, who do you want spending the majority of the time with your children? Do you want it to be the school system or do you want it to be you? Because one, one or the other, or one of those two will shape the way your child's mind views the world. It will shape your child, even their, their morals to some degree, because it's so much time. Who do you want shaping your child? Do you want it to be the school system or do you want it to be you? I personally would pick me. Other people would pick me. <laughs> I'm saying. Right. If you care and you want to bring into this world and you want to take it seriously, you know, that God told us to raise up, you know, this next generation. Do you want to take that, you know, really seriously, hands on, give it everything and leave a legacy? Homeschooling is going to give you a bigger opportunity to do that than anything else. And also I should mention my <laughs> mother-in-law is amazing. She homeschooled my husband very differently than I was, but she homeschooled my husband. Oh, that's great. So yeah. I, I need married, to interview him next. No. <laughs> I married a homeschool boy and I'm telling you it's worth it because we're going to, we're going to do things differently in both of our parents, but we'll still homeschool. Well, that's really encouraging. Very encouraging. And you know, it's funny that you mentioned that whole dichotomy of who you want raising your children. And um, it's, I just was doing a, a talk. Um, it's called the homeschool mom conference and it's on um, starting to homeschool your kids. So it's just really basics of, you know, why people homeschool, um, how to get started, um, what, what happens when you have struggles, things like that. And I was talking about how there is the three different um, authorities or influences on your child when they go to school. It's you, it's the school, or it's their peers. And so mm -hmm. often, and I think it's what's shaping our culture and what is um, driving children away from the church and um, so many other issues, I feel that children are choosing their peers. And who, in their right mind, learns um, to live, learns socialization skills, learns all those different things, learns about relationships, um, who learns from someone who has no idea about the subject, right? <laughs> They're just as dumb as your kid. They're all dumb. They need right? someone to actually pour light and goodness into them and, and, and their peers. They're not going to get that. Their peers right. are like having an entire diet of Ritz crackers. You're going <laughs> to uh, your whole st your whole growth spurt. Yeah, that's gone. Ritz crackers right. ain't going to grow you, but Right. You know what? You give them some sunshine and some water and some, some <laughs> fruits and vegetables. That's that's basically the difference be between, uh, to me, now I know this is dramatic, but to me, the difference between homeschooling is, um, you know, a grass-fed cow versus um, in the public school is like a cow being fed, you know, whatever concoction they're fed every day. Right. That's really the difference. The cow's still alive, they're but what's the quality of education right. in their life? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yes, I totally agree. And um, if you have any other, let me see if I have any other questions from the audience. Anybody else? 
I don't see any right now, but we might have some on um, Facebook later. So if you are on Facebook and you're joining us on the replay, make sure you comment um, with any questions that you have and we will um, get those answered later. So thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you follow Conservative conservative babes on Instagram and um, listen into deconstructing the culture. Is that right? Yes. On, yes. on, on, um, on her podcast. And I want to just thank you so much for joining me and thank you for sharing your heart and encouraging all of the homeschool moms and potential homeschool moms um, out there. So we'll talk, to you. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.